Hello. Ba ba ba. La la la. Hello. And welcome. Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. Ooh. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And, oh, this is another live stream. Carol's watching on Facebook. Belinda's watching on Facebook. Don't know if anyone's watching on YouTube yet. And tomorrow, or the day after, I, I'm going to be broadcasting also to Instagram as well. <gasps> yeah! Hi, Belinda. How you doing? Hi. Hi, Jason, says Belinda. So... This is just my let me boy to sleep, scratchy nose. <laughs> and it's weird because I've got the phone there and the iPad there. And it's kind of not quite in sync. And also I kind of look there, but then I kind of, <laughs> if you know what I mean, it's, it's a bit weird, but hey. And I've got the two microphones. Tomorrow I'll have three microphones. I have four, in fact. Because I will have uh, a microphone for the iPad, because at the moment I don't. So I'll have a microphone, external microphone for the iPad, uh, for when I do the YouTube ones, and I'll have an external for... That's if I do the YouTube. I don't know which one to use, but for the other phone, I'll have a microphone for that one as well. So Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube sold at the same time. <sighs> now I'm down to just one person. Belinda, I think it might just me be me and you all night. All night? That sounds weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. My little beard trimmer is... Uh, charging as we speak so I'm going to have a little a little shave tomorrow it's good to have something to look forward to isn't it <laughs> Belinda says you had a haircut looks good thank you um, I'm just going to put my hair it looks yeah from, from that angle it looks like I'm kind of bald well, I kind of am bald, but it looks just part of the hair is growing quicker than other parts, which is weird. I might shave it all off again tomorrow, although there's not much to shave off, as you can see. But uh, I don't know. I like to play around with hair, with my hair, which is weird. I like to let the beard grow and let the, you know, I've got pictures, and I've got videos actually, where my beard was so big, like almost, it was trampy, it was, it was just unkempt, and at the time, I enjoyed playing with it, it was kind of like a new hobby. I was playing with it, twisting it, I'm pulling it into my mouth and like chewing on the hairs from my chin. And it was quite a, quite a lot of fun, but in the end, it's weird because when I shaved it off, the lady in the petrol station said to me, oh, I'm so glad you, you got rid of that beard. It looked awful. I was like, really? Really? I mean, yeah, thanks. Thanks for telling me now. No, so no one says, oh, by the way, you know, it was afterwards, isn't it? Oh, your hair looks so much better now. 
Well, you smell much, so much better now that you've had a bath. We well, didn't mention it for the last six months. So I've not been washing. But now I've washed like, oh, no. So I like having hair. But at the same time, it's much easier to have no hair. It's much easier just to have it like this. I haven't got to do anything with it. Literally, nout. It's just there. It's ready. I look the same as when I get up in the morning as I do when I go to bed at night. It's just the same. But that's it. That's all I've got to say. What time is t 11 23? Yesterday I did what well, it was early hours of the morning. And I had a few people actually come on and talk to me. I just don't know when a good time to do live streams is because I've kind of sort of in my own mind anyway committed to making or to doing streams to streaming my at least this uh, maybe not the deep sleep whisper ones or the daily relax and sleep hypnosis ones or uh, the boring podcast uh, objects or the bedtime story time or blah blah whatever whatever I do but this 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 thing this thing that I do um I have to be careful where I put my hands. I don't mean like, ooh, I mean just in the sense of, um, <laughs> I don't know, what do I mean? What do I mean? No, in a sense of like banging the microphones and stuff I like on that. <sighs> so I'm getting some lighting, some professional lighting. Well, yeah, I suppose it is professional lighting. And to, and I'm, perhaps I don't need it, but I'm going to get it. I'm getting it anyway. So I'm going to have a big light over there, a big light over there, a big light maybe above me. So that the... It just makes the picture better, better, and that's that's kind of like my aim now is to try to improve upon quality picture and audio as well. Audio, <laughs> audio. So today I want to close my eyes for a bit just to rest my eyes. <sighs> As there's no one watching, apart from Belinda, it's just me and you, Belinda. Let's close our eyes together and just pretend we're somewhere, maybe on a beach, sun shining. It's nice and bright and warm and cozy and it feels wonderful and but there's no chance of the sun rays causing any problems to our skin. It's a healthy sun and it's got some kind of block. It's got a filter in front of it so we don't have to wear Not sanitary towels, um, suntan lotion. I'm not really a big fan of suntan lotion. It's very greasy. I think it probably goes back to when I was young. And I had, I guess I had spots. I was prone to spots. So putting grease onto my skin didn't seem like a very good idea at the time. Didn't seem like 
such a good idea at the time. I didn't. Belinda says, I just got out of the got out of the sunbed. Ah. Isn't that a coincidence that I just mentioned about being in the sun and you just got out of the sunbed? Now you might start to think that I've got cam hidden cameras in your home. Like I haven't. I mean, if I knew where you lived, I would, but I don't, so I can't. Hidden cameras? Ugh. I wouldn't even have hidden cameras in my own home. But then why would you, I suppose? I never understood that, why people... The idea of putting a hidden... Ca hiding a camera in a toilet. Or in a bathroom. Ugh. Who'd want to watch someone go into a toilet? Ugh. Belinda says, I hope so. Oh, no, I mean, I hope not. No. No. Although I could, because I'm not going to be doing any big editing. But I could, like, get a camera sort of over there to, and I could edit it. So, you know, I could see myself in the distance and a camera over there and, like, some of the... Um, vloggers on YouTube, but nope. Mm. Oh, I've got someone watching, which is funny because VVN four YI FYI VVN. What's VVN? According to the thing, there's no one is actually watching on YouTube, but. On here, oh, okay. Just want to make it vyn dot fyi. Don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. So I hope everyone listening or watching is well. Those that because you know more people are going to be listening. After the event, you know, well, anyone listening to the podcast, they're going to be listening after the event. So those watching, obviously, you're you're seeing it in real time, and you you can enjoy the excitement of being bored live. So who else is watching on Facebook? So there's two people watching. According to YouTube, no one's watching. Still trying to figure out a time to do this. Like a a good time when uh, like a regular audience can watch. But although right now it's, it's early really. It's half past 11 in the evening. I'm feeling quite tired. I'm ready for bed. <sighs> Obviously, I can't go to bed because uh, I've just started this um, 13 minutes in. So the earliest I could finish this really is in an hour or 47 minutes. <laughs> this is it's turning into a job. I'm counting the minutes before I can go back home. But I am home. I know, I know you are. Oh. I did go, I went for a walk earlier. Absolutely beautiful day here. Uh, it wasn't cold, sunshine, blue sky. It was gorgeous, really really gorgeous and yeah I went for a walk with my friend it was about uh, on the way back yeah, it was 3 o'clock when we got so yeah just before 3 o'clock I left the house and it was just so nice what I really wanted to do is go for a walk in the park 
My friend Noel's there watching. I see you. Hi, Noel. What I really wanted to do is go for a, a nice walk in the park, maybe just film like I do. But it's so muddy, so damn muddy. So I didn't bother. By the way, this is supposed to be boring, just in case anyone. How? Why are you so boring? It's, it's supposed to be boring. It really is. So yeah, not done much. Still working on the website. Loads to do on the website. Absolutely huge amounts. Um, uh, I mean, the website's never going to be finished. It's... It's kind of like my penis. It's never going to be to the right... It's never going to have grown to the right length yet, you know? Still growing. I tell myself that. I have to tell myself that it's going to get bigger one day. It just keeps me going, you know. But yeah, I, the website's still going, still growing, and I've got so much to do to add to it. And the podcasts, it's going well. I've had about 30,000 downloads today. Um... There's certain things have changed that was made it difficult. Uh, the, but that's okay. It's just the way it is. But I'm getting thirty thousand. So am I set a month? Thirty thousand three. So every ten days, three three hundred thousand, three six. So that's about nine hundred thousand a month. So last month I had eight hundred and seventy thousand downloads. Um. The month before, I think, 820. So I might actually, I might hit the, I guess, I've not reached a million yet in a month. Which is fine, I'm not moaning. And it's weird because, you know, I've got, talking about having 800,000 downloads in a month and 30,000 downloads a day. And I've got one person watching me on Facebook and no one watching me on YouTube. Strange, isn't it? Yet thousands of people will listen to this on the podcasts when I upload it tomorrow morning or whenever. Because I have to edit it first. It's strange, isn't it? So why am I giving energy towards this when really it's, you know, it's my podcast listeners that are, they're my real friends. They're my real family. So they're the listeners. What one person listening on watching on Facebook, and it's either Noel or Belinda. So unless, of course, the Facebook stats are wrong and there's more than one person, but there's no one on YouTube. I'm live twenty minutes. No one. Mind you, I've only got 600 and, I think I've got 600 and, <laughs> 612 subscribers. Belinda, it's me. I knew Belinda. I knew you'd still be there. I knew I could trust you. I knew it. It's, um, see, Noel was a friend of mine, so he wouldn't want to watch me. Because it'd be, if, if you know, because I've known him for 30 years, I've, yeah. Blimey, 30 years I've known Noel. So he's one of the only people from real life that I have on my Facebook. And part of the reason is because we don't live near each other and he's he travels. So he travels the world and that. So I kind of, it's a good way of keeping in contact. Because telephones aren't always, if someone's in the middle of the Pacific, Pacific? ocean or in another country um facebook's quite a sometimes an easier way to contact or to keep but not that i don't yeah to be fair i don't really use facebook that much to really contact people but as far as family and friends i've got i've got a couple of friends i've got maybe 
three or four friends, like real life people that I know on Facebook, and family, one, I got a cousin on here, no, a cousin and an auntie actually, who's her mum, it's my cousin's mum, it's, yeah, my cousin's mother, me auntie, so she's on Facebook as well, uh, outside of that, I don't really, oh, my friend's, um, one of my best friends, I've not got him on Facebook, but his dad's on Facebook. His dad, dad, his dad added me, and uh, I can't ignore it, can I? If his dad adds me, so I have to, I had to sort of add him. But that, um, but my friend, if anyone says, "Oh, John, add me on Facebook," said, "No, you live downstairs. You live around the corner. I'm not going to add you on Facebook." I got some neighbour. I had a neighbour the other day. Said, "Well, give me your telephone number." I said, "Why?" So you know where I live. I just live here. I don't need to. I don't need your phone in me. Was that rude? I don't know. Didn't seem rude to me. It didn't seem rude at all. So, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> what do you want to talk about, man? I don't know. Oh, uh, let me think. You know, I think about the time. I remember since so 2022. What was I doing 10 years ago? What was I doing 20 years ago? What was I doing 30 years ago? And what was I doing 40 years ago? Now, 50 years ago... I was one years old, one and a half. So I know that already. Where I was then, I was living with foster parents um, in Enfield, North London. And so, and I was living with my brother, my older, one of my brothers was also living with these foster parents. Lovely people, apparently. I don't remember. Um... But they wanted to adopt us, actually, for real. So they clearly loved us. So that was good. So that was 20, 50, that was 50 years ago. Don't remember much more than that at that time. Now, 40 years ago, I would have been 12. In my 12th year, 1982... I had my appendix out. I'm pretty sure that was the year I had my appendix out. And what I did is I pretended to have appendicitis to get off school. Now, I knew someone that had their appendix out and I knew what the symptoms were. And my older brother had suspected appendicitis, grumbling appendix, but he didn't have his appendix out. So I thought, ah. Oh, I'm going to, and, you know, because I, I really didn't like school. So I just, I've always had an issue with learning. I don't like it. I'm against it. It should be banned. And so what I did, when there was time, and this is bad, there was times I used to, I used to ch chuck myself down the stairs, hoping that I'd like hurt myself so I didn't have to go to school. I know it's a horrible, stupid thing to do, but that's what I used to do. That's how how little I loved going to school. So, and this was high school. Junior school, I didn't have an issue with. Infant school, junior school, um, pr whatever you, primary, whatever you want to call it. High school, didn't like it. The the teachers, it was it was almost like being at home. Teachers talking down to me, just being rude and telling me I was stupid and you know I just didn't didn't fit in never have fitted in ever but there's been times when I felt more at home 
So, for example, like my friend Noel there, he's retired now, but he uh, owned a comedy club that I used to frequent from 1991 January. I started going in there. And it's the only place really that I ever loved. Like, it's, I just... I've never really loved a building before. It's weird. It's strange. But I loved that building. I loved the club. And I spent many hours there as a customer. Uh, I worked there. I did all, you know, I was there in different capacities. And I loved it. Loved that place. And I guess, I mean, when I first worked there, the staff knew that I was friends with the owner, the boss. And some of them, I didn't realise at the time, but I was told by other people that they thought I was a spy. Like, really? And like I was going to spy on the staff for my friend, the boss. Um... I was going to spy on them anyway. I had nothing to do with that. Uh, just, I love spying on people. <laughs> no. No. And when I first, the very first night I worked there, because I'd been going there for, I'd been there seven years, been going there before I'd sort of started working there on a weekend. And at the end of the night, all of the staff made a circle of chairs around in a circle and left me out. And it was only the the barman, Johnny, who invited me in and told people to move aside so I could sort of pull a chair in. It's almost like they purposely left, like it was weird. And a couple of staff members were rude to me, they didn't like me, they didn't talk to me. And a good thing about it is if you, if you were somewhere long enough the arseholes generally leave the the rude people the people that clearly they don't like their job people that are miserable at work is for lots of different reasons um but ultimately if they if someone hates their job or doesn't like it especially if it's a part-time job they're not going to be there long i mean people get stuck in a full-time job that they don't like maybe and it's harder to leave, I guess, if you've got family and, you know, debts or whatever. Mortgages. We need to eat. But with a part-time job, like a waiter, waiter or waitressing job or a bar job that's maybe a couple of nights a week. You can pretty much get another job anywhere doing that. So you're not stuck there. So if, you, if you're not happy, then you'd leave. So what happened is these people left. And... I personally think that as I was there, the staff became nicer. Not the staff that were already there, but all the new people were lovely. Like, they were really nice. And they, I don't think I had an issue with anybody that worked there. They were all nice. And um, I was really good friends with the door staff. Uh the waitresses, waiters, everyone. It was, and it's the only, even though I didn't, I've never really felt, I felt at home there. So I've not really talked about this, but I felt at home there. And I mean, I loved that place. Like, loved it. Like, um, I'm getting emotional because it's gone. So the place is gone. Uh, it's not there anymore. Uh, the building's there, but the, the club's not there anymore. And my dream was to one day, buy it off my friend and even though you know I was working in a I was earning two pound an hour uh or three pound an hour whatever in low paid work uh for most of my twenties you know so the, the the chance of me ever having any money was pretty much non existent but I still had that dream of like one day um and it was always, I always wanted to pay above the amount 
So to give my friend, who is a million quid, there you go, it's a million pound, and I'll have the club and, um, I don't know, it's just a dream. I had this, that little dream. But it was something I quite liked, because uh, I worked in the office, I worked downstairs, so I got to know this staff in different parts, sort of like the management side, the office side, uh, I was friends with the people in the kitchen. Because I did everything. I was a cleaner there at the time. When I was, oh, cleaner, took the money on the door. I'd clear tables. <laughs> I'd do anything. I didn't care. I'd just do whatever. And so, a DJ, I forgot I was a DJ as well. I was, I think I was regarded as, the worst DJ in London at the time. <laughs> Actually, I was a good wedding disco. I was a good wedding disco. So, uh, it's it's funny because the staff would moan like, "Oh, so you're playing the same songs." But if you're working every weekend, you're hearing the same songs. But the people coming, it's not the same songs to them because they weren't here last week. You know, even the regular customers might come three, four times a year at the weekend, maybe every Wednesday. But so, you know, playing ABBA, do 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 do, you know, uh, wham, it can get a bit tedious hearing it every day, every week. Wham, I'm your man, don't you know who I am? Uh, whatever. Come on, Eileen. Um, Dancing Queen. I Will Survive. Or I used to call it the man-hating song. Because um, that was in the period when... The music, the dance music was really good in the late 90s. Um, I know you could say dance music is good always or the dance music is never good depends on what you like but there was like everybody is free to feel good um, those kind of you know those um, a lot of dance music is really pop pop dance music and I loved it I loved the dance music back then you know, it's it's one of those, I can actually sit and listen, well I used to be able to sit and listen to dance music, like sit and listen to it and be doing something maybe on a computer. Before that I couldn't because I didn't, you know, the dance music from the 80s, uh, you know, like techno and all that stuff really wasn't my thing. Alison is watching on Facebook, hello Alison. Um, so I've got 39,000 people watching on YouTube. Hi, everyone. That's 30,000 lies. Where is everyone? So I'm... Um, it's weird. Why am I focusing on doing live streams? Don't even like it. <laughs> don't like doing live stuff. I don't want to be on camera, really. But... I don't dislike doing it because I wouldn't do it if I didn't like doing it. No one's forcing me to. But I don't know. I kind of realised recently that with the podcast, a couple of things happened on my podcast. One was I had to get rid of hundreds of my recordings because they didn't meet a certain criteria because they had lots of music. Now, I've changed that so there's now music, but it's underneath me talking for five hours and ten hours. So I've, I've kind of made those recordings. So I've re-uploaded them. I'm still in the process of re-uploading. And then I'm making the website so that all of my stuff can be listened to, streamed for free. You can download them for free, all of the recordings, including the ones with music, which I never used to have on my website. 
and then the um, other stuff happened, which just shows that I can't rely solely if I want to do this as a as a job, as a as a business in the future. I cannot rely solely on podcasting. No matter how um, how well I was going to use the word successful, but I don't know. I don't know what criteria I need to use. I'm successful for me, but you know, Joe Rogan gets 300 million downloads a month. I'm just about, you know, I'm getting maybe 800,000 a month. But there are a lot of people out there that are maybe getting 10,000 downloads a month and they're happy and it's, you know, it's, it's growing for them. So for some people, 800,000 downloads a month is, they would be like, wow, that's a huge amount. And for other people, it's nothing. So, you know, I guess it just depends. I mean, I've, I've researched this, I've gone online and thought, okay, what is a good amount for a month as a podcast? What makes, uh, what's the difference between a, a podcast that isn't, particularly successful and one that's doing really well and you know what is the difference between one that's doing okay one that's doing pretty good one that's doing really well and one that's really doing you know really you know that's like a way above the average because Joe Rogan you can't compare it's, it's not fair for anyone to compare with those podcasts that, because he's a superstar, he's he's an internet superstar, and uh, you know as he he makes millions of dollars a month doing what he does, it's, you know. So is he can't? There's no point comparing with him. So I'd be interested because. With YouTube, you can go onto a thing called, oh, I forget the name of it, but there's a website you can go onto and you can actually find out the stats for every YouTube channel that there is. You just put in the name of the YouTube channel and it tells you how many subscribers they've got. And I've got, as I said, 612 subscribers. So, or is it? Yeah, I think it is. So it's very low, but it's growing, it's growing kind of um you can find out how many down how many people have how many views each uh day they get and how many videos they've uploaded and uh and then it gives you like in an estimate of how much that person will earn off of the podcast uh, uh, off of the youtube channel monthly and yearly and it, it it starts off at a very low amount and then goes up to a, a much higher amount. So, again, it's quite difficult to sort of work out. I think I think you could probably make about between five hundred and a million pound, yeah, five hundred and a thousand dollars per million plays. Uh, I think that's kind of roughly where it is with YouTube, but it depends what you do. So you can see that on YouTube. You can see where people are. With podcasts, you can't see that. There's no equivalent there online. I've looked. And if there is an equivalent, maybe let me know, because I have not found one. So I kind of... Obviously, I don't need to look at that for myself because I know what I'm doing. But it'd be nice to see what other people are doing, especially uh, the top in the charts of Spotify. Uh, you know, ones like the True Crime podcasts because they're among the most popular podcasts. Uh, the other really popular podcasts would be celebrities. 
celebrity podcast, you know, uh, famous people that are doing podcasts. So, uh, you know, people like me, of course. So I don't know where I, where I am, where I... I really don't know. I mean, I might literally be nowhere near other people but I'm sure um, there was a really popular podcaster talking about getting 12 million downloads a year which was like brilliant you know and then, I, then I'm thinking I'm not actually far off that myself really I'm getting over 800,000 a month and it's 8 Nine, it's nearly 10,000, 10 million a year. So I know it's not 300,000 a month. <laughs> 300,000, 300 million. 300 million, which Joe Rogan gets. And he does his stuff on YouTube and on Spotify. So he's making money. I don't know how it works. I'm guessing... I would have thought that he'd make more money doing it himself than having someone pay him. Because I just thought, figured, you know, he's got all the equipment, he's got YouTube, is free to run, doesn't cost anything, in a sense, if you haven't got to pay YouTube anything, um, you need the equipment, and to build an audience up, which he's done anyway, on YouTube, and then Spotify decided to, like pay him I don't know how much he gets he gets a lot of money he's the highest paid podcaster in the world but there's a huge difference between him and pretty much everyone else I don't think there's anyone else who does podcasts that actually earn anywhere near what he gets he's He's just in a different book. He's just completely different to everyone else. But I'd love to know where people are. Are are their podcasts getting 10 million downloads a month? Or a week? Or a day even? Are there people out there that are getting you know, a million downloads a day? And how much are they making just out of interest? I mean, a million, that, that's, that's a lot of money. It really is. Um, someone making a, if a million downloads a day, I can't even work it out. It would be a millionaire anyway. Instantly, you'd be a millionaire if you was getting a million downloads a day. But I don't know how much it'd work out because it depends upon the advertising and stuff. But I've been thinking, you know, all my all my little babies have been in one one wardrobe. You know, it's like everything's sort of in one place with podcasting and. Even before, when I used to do YouTube for years and years, I did. I focused on YouTube. I still did the podcasts, so not everything was in one place. I still, uh, yeah. I mean, I was still getting maybe hundred, two hundred thousand downloads a year on my podcasts, and then with the YouTube, I began um, at the height. And it's still a small amount. I'm, I'm, don't worry, I'm not bragging because there's nothing to brag about. But my my YouTube channel was growing, and I was getting forty five thousand plays a month. But it went from four, from about thirty three thousand to forty five thousand, and it was growing exponentially. And I think I had about three thousand subscribers. Which, again, I know it's not a lot, but at the time, for me, 
I was suddenly getting loads of subscribers every day and just really growing. And it was exciting times. I'll be honest with you, it was exciting. Because I've been doing it for years, since 2007. And it only really started to become popular, the podcast, the YouTube channel, in... I think it was 2011, that's when I really saw a change. But 2011, 2012, so I'd say 2012 up to 2013. So maybe 2013, if actually. I lose track, I really struggle to remember. Um... But like 2012, 2013, so 2011 is that when I when I started getting, oh, I've got someone on YouTube watching, hi, whoever you are, hello, um, I, I had my first viral video on YouTube, it wasn't viral, but for me it was viral, because... I went from getting a hundred of you know, a few hundred views to suddenly having thousands of views um, of this video like overnight, and I'd never had that before. I was happy to get a few hundred views on a video, and it was growing. You know, it was growing very, very steadily and slowly. And um, what I found with YouTube is. Once someone likes you, they kind of stick with you a little bit. They're very, they had a very, I had a very loyal audience on YouTube, <clears throat> and I still do a little bit actually. I've still got people that watch my videos that used to watch me back, like, two thousand and ten, two thousand and nine, sometimes. So some people have stuck with me for for a long time, following me wherever I go. You know, so if, it sounds weird, doesn't it? my disciples but just following me listening to me on a different podcast hosts that I've had SoundCloud various you know, different places Podomatic and now Spreaker the thing is In the past, there wasn't all of these different places to listen to podcasts. Because Spotify didn't used to have podcasts. iTunes didn't used to have podcasts. There was a time when the only people that listen, the only really way to promote. Leslie says, can't stay, Jason, but I wish you all the best. I will be back. I will be back. Thanks, Leslie. That's on YouTube. See you later. Um, what was I saying? I forget. I forget what I said. Um, let's talk about YouTube videos. And... Someone's sending love, love hearts. Who's that sending me love, love hearts? Who's that? Thank you, whoever did. Sending me kisses, kisses and love. What was I thinking about? I was talking. What was I talking about? YouTube videos. People following me. Yeah, in the old days, and I can talk about the old days, not just because I'm old. But I've been doing this stuff for a long time. I mean, if you look back at some of my early videos, and some of them are on YouTube, just look at what I looked like then. You know, I had no grey hairs. Um, I Actually, I used to be a girl. But, you know, I've changed a lot over the years. But I've, I was so much younger. I was 30... Five years old when I first started doing this stuff. 35, I'm now 79. 
So I, you know, it's weird, but, you know, I can go back and think, well, there was a time when you didn't have podcast places where you could listen to podcasts in the way we do now. There was podcast hosts and some of those podcast hosts would have their own audience. So Podomatic is an example of one of those places and it still does. Um, I've not been on there for a long time, but I used to be on there uh, for years on and off. If I had a podcast that was on there for, I had two that was on there for six years, something like that, four, three, four, five years. And I went on there one day, I forgot all about them. And between them, they'd been, they'd had about, um, about 300,000 downloads between the two podcasts. And I've not even looked at them. I just uploaded them. One had 30 episodes, the other one had seven. And between them, there was over 300,000 downloads. It's like, wow. I couldn't believe it. It's like, and my main podcast at the time, I was probably, probably reached about 200,000 downloads for the year. The previous year, I probably got about 150. The year before that, about 100,000 downloads. So, you know, to just find these two little podcasts that had accumulated 300,000 plays over that period without any promotion or anything from my side um, because Podomatic had its own audience had its own kind of you know group of people that listened to the podcasts so other than that people had to promote their own podcasts by going on to you know posting on Facebook or having their own website and just or, with the hope that people would share. Now, I don't know if anybody hardly ever shares what I do. I don't even know how people come across me. I mean, I'm in a few charts. I'm in like the top. 10 or top 30 or top 20 of a few podcast charts out there in the category of uh, health or sleep or whatever so maybe because I went to Spotify I was watching Spotify on my television and I thought mm, I know what I'll do I put in sleep hypnosis search in the search bar and I came up, I mean, four of my, I think four or five of my podcasts came up. I wasn't first, I was like third. And then I was maybe seventh and then 14th. And, you know, sort of just along the, along the way. And I was like, wow, I'm just, it's almost like I've become a, part of the I'm just here just here doing what I do and some people listen some people don't and I can't really in some ways figure out why to make sure what have I got 21% of my uh, iPad 20% of the battery left, so it should be fine. I'm trying to figure out why. Excuse me. That's a big question, isn't it? Why? Why, 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 why? Why, 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 why? Do fools fall in love with fools like you? Oh, genie, genie, genie. What's that? What's that from, anyone? 
Genie, genie. Oh, genie, genie, Jim. Madonna. True Blue, the album. See? Educational. This is an educational podcast, don't you know? Learn a lot from me. <laughs> There's probably very little to learn. Oh, hello there. Hi. All these microphones, all these screens staring at me. I don't know what to do. Never used to be like this. I used to just have my phone and make it just film myself from a YouTube video. It was much easier. I'd upload it, no editing. I'd get the audio from the video and I'd just post that onto podcast. No editing. <laughs> I did. It's ridiculous. So many old podcasts. No editing. Just sometimes me and you, all you could hear is like and scratching and and just me, you know, fumbling and me doing me zip up and just flushing the toilet, you know, all that stuff. Just and then, hello and welcome to JasonNewland dot com. Only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And it was so bad, really. That no, I, there was times, there was a time when I would not edit. Would not, I couldn't be bothered. I just thought... <sighs> I need to go to bed. I need to go bye-byes. I need bye-byes. Bye-bye. Uh, and relax. I haven't done any. Ugh. I got. I've done no weights today. No weight training at all today. And I don't. I haven't felt the need. Oh, sniffy. That's nice. My back's felt all right. That's the main reason I do the weights. Is for my back. Also to make myself look. Hench and sexy, and it clearly doesn't work. Oh, I've got muscles. Look, I have. They're hidden. I'm a little. I'm a little bit like Billie Eilish. Like Billie Eilish, um, used to wear really. Sometimes still does wear really baggy clothes. To cover up her um, body. To cover up her bumps. As she likes to say. Or, or she, that's what I like to say. You know she's an 18 year old girl. I'm not. I'm just saying. Is she, is she 18? <laughs> um, I'm kind of similar. I, You know. I, I'm hiding my muscles. Instead of wearing baggy clothes. I walk around with a big layer of fat over me. <laughs> so I'm like Billie Eilish. But instead of baggy clothes, it's blubber. Covering up my... My voluptuousness. Weird word, isn't it? Voluptuous. How was your steak, sir? It was voluptuous. 
Where's this? Oh, that's a voluptuous cat. <laughs> voluptuous. I like to think it is quite like, I like the word voluptuous because that would kind of describe the type of lady that I, I, I find drawn to, a voluptuous lady. But what does it mean? What does it, what does, what does, what does it really mean? What does it mean? Fat? Does it mean big? Does it mean... I don't know. For me, it just means... Whoa. <laughs> it means... Whoa. I like her. Whoa. God, I've just gone back to 1973. Whoa. Oh, what's your name, darling? Oh. No, I've never done that in my life. Never. I might have done it at school for a joke. You know, I never... Why, oh, darling, what's your name? Want to go... Ooh. Oh. <laughs> nah. Wolf whistling? Nah. Just... There's almost, uh, I think, that that cliche of builders or you know people working on a roof or something, wolf whistling, ladies and quite often schoolgirls on the way to school. Um, that just, I don't know. I guess there's a degree of freedom in being able to do that. You know. But it's, I mean, a father is, I mean, it's, it's very un, unacceptable socially these days to do anything like that. But I've, that's why I quite liked Barbara Windsor in the Carry On films, because she used to grab the men. So that a man would be like flirting, go wolf whistling. And Barbara Windsor would chase and start trying to pinch his bum, and he'd be like, "Oh, get off me, get off me!" Well, yeah, and she'd do a laugh, and she'd be chasing him around, like turn the tables, almost um, Benny Hill esque kind of. But she was Benny Hill, which makes me wonder if he got the idea from her. Oh, eh? This is deep. As deep as an ocean on my bum hole. It's, she's, maybe that's what it is. Benny Hill copied Barbara Windsor in the carry-on films. And for those that don't know what a carry-on film is or what Barbara Windsor, not what Barbara Windsor, who Barbara Windsor is or was, she's not with us anymore. She was um, one of the main leads or stars I, I would say part of the crew part of the cast because quite often there wasn't really a star because lots of them were in it together like carry on camping there wouldn't just be one there was never just one star you could say well Sid James is the star because he's in so many of them or Kenneth Williams um, or I guess Barbara Windsor but Barbara Windsor wasn't in as many of the Carry On films as Sid James or Kenneth Williams I'm trying to think of who else what's her name the matron she was in loads of them and the blonde lady she was in loads of them as well she played the French queen in Carry On Off With Her Heads um, I forget her name so I'm guessing most people would know what the films were but they might not so basically what it is it was just a, 
a film franchise and it is well for me I, I love them I don't give a stuff what anyone else thinks and they are outdated but so am I I'm outdated I'm old I'm I don't I can't try and pretend to be um woke or whatever stupid new word is in this week um I just all I can be is me and I I find that I find the carry on films it's not just that they're they're funny and they're entertaining and they're they're they warm me they you know it's stuff from the past and a lot of those films were made before I was even born but they used to be on telly on a Sunday afternoon uh, when I was a kid I mean I think most of the carry on films in fact had been finished I think there wasn't by the late 70s they're pretty much done so 50s, 60s and 70s the carry on films were done and then so by the time I started watching them on telly you know they'd stopped making them and I just the music was funny the characters were funny and because a lot of the characters are the same actors in different ones you get to know the community you get to know them and it was just fun fun to watch you know it wasn't supposed to change your life it was just a bit of fun now you know some people could do a social commentary on a on a carry on film and um bore you even more than i am about all the harm and the you know all the bad things about them i'm not interested in that i just find them i just like them and i, I don't watch them that very often but sometimes it's nice to turn the TV on and there's a the beginning of carry on up the jungle or carry on I know something like that I'll tell you other films I liked and can't get them to watch can't watch them anywhere can't stream them can't find them anywhere is um, confessions films Confessions of a driving instructor, confessions of a window cleaner. I'm sure there was a confessions of a pop performer, confessions of a plumber. I don't know. But it was Robin Asquith, who was in a few of the Carry On films, and he, Robin Asquith, actually played. There was a TV show with. Um, but, but, but Sid James called Bless Bless This House and I think that was a tune but I remember I never I, I don't think I really got to watch it but my granddad was watching it because it was on when I visited my granddad when I was a little, little kid. I was probably six. And I remember that being on. So 1976, you know, I think it was on then about that time. Anyway, the movie version, Robin Asquith played Sid James's son. Now, the, the TV show had a different man, but apparently he wasn't available to do the movie for whatever reason. So Robin Asquith took on the role of his son. And I would say Robin Asquith is possibly one of the most underrated comedy characters. He's such a great comedy actor. The, the physicality of him, the facial expressions that he made. Um, and he was cheeky. But these confession films were adult. 
So they kind of were in the same vein as the Carry On films, really, but with less characters. You know, with the there is certain characters that were in it. Um, and so wait a minute. Is yeah, here's a bit of trivia. His brother in the carry on in the confession films because they were adults, so he would get himself into um, it'd be a driving instructor or window cleaner, and he'd get dragged in by the women, and then their husband would come home, and you know, all that kind of stuff. But it was a comedy, and but they were kind of X rated. I watched them all when I was a kid, when I was probably a teenager. My brother got them on video, so I watched them. Loved them. I thought it was hilarious. And then... He... Yeah, his brother, in the movie, in the, in the TV... Sh yeah, in the movies, was the same person who... Tony Blair married his daughter. Yeah. So Tony Blair, his daughter married Tony Blair, the ex-Prime Minister. How about that for some trivia? I think I got... I might have a toothache. I might have a bit of... Do you know when you get a splinter and you stick something into the splinter and you get the splinter out, but it still feels like the splinter's in there? That's what it feels like a little bit in one of my teeth, I think. Because I could use a toothpick and I think I might have perhaps stuck it in a bit too far into the gum so it feels like there's something in there, but there isn't. Just regret. Oh, ah, right. Anyway, this has been a weird one. I've had no one to talk to at all on this podcast. Nobody apart from Belinda who said hi, and that was it. No one's spoken to me, really. No questions, nothing. So there you go. Another podcast done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe eleven thirty at night or twelve thirty at night is not a good time. When is a good time? I don't know. I'm uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, anyway, that's it. I'm gonna go now. Thank you very much. Um, remember. To be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. I'll fall asleep myself now. Oh, I could fall asleep quite easily. So I want to go, take care, bye, 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 bye. Now what I've got to do is press the stop button, so on YouTube, end it, and on Facebook, 